Hello, welcome to a new video. If you are new here, my name is Amadine. I've been living in Singapore for three years and on this channel, I like to share about anything that's happening in Singapore. This video is a bit impromptu, but I wanted to share with you the process of applying for a Chinese visa. As Lynn and me, I've been going through this process and just yesterday we went to apply for visa. So it's quite exciting, but I must say that applying for Chinese visa is quite uh, quite a process, quite complicated, so that's why I think this video can be helpful if you are going through the same process. Let's dive right in with the kind of visa you will most likely apply for. It's mine, a uh, L visa. It's the most basic tourist visa that you can find to go to China. In the case of Lin, because he has his mom over there, he applied for a Q2, which is kind of the equivalent of a family visit pass. For a period of time, China was only delivering Q1 and Q2 visas, but now also L visas, so it means that anyone can actually get the opportunity to go and visit China. Before applying for the visa, you actually have to have some paper, like your plane tickets. In our case, we really wanted to get a direct flight because we didn't want to have connection that could make the visa application more difficult than it is already. So we booked a flight from Singapore to Chengdu, which is really near our final destination, which is Chongqing, where Lin's parents live. Then to apply for the visa, in the end, it's quite easy because everything is on the same platform, but it's not really like self-explanatory so that's why i want to do this video i will put the website and any information in the description box as well uh, but when you go to this website it's quite simple you have to go to visa then to application and you can start your application you have to fill in quite a big number of details like your personal information but on top of that you have to also add some work experience, um, any degrees that you have, where you have been traveling in the past and all this kind of information. So it can take some time like maybe 20-30 minutes to get everything right. Then when you're done filling in the form, you have to make sure to keep somewhere the application form number as well as the application form because you will have to print it um, to go to the appointment that you have to make. So to get the appointment, it's a bit uh, complicated also because you have to uh, deal with your timeline when you are flying, etc. So in our case, we took the appointment one month before flying um, and actually to get the visa, it's quite fast from the time you apply. It's only four days uh, after applying. So like based on your timeline, you have to arrange it nicely. So we were able to have the same date to apply for a Chinese visa, which was yesterday. Let me give you an exact list of documents that you have to prepare for your appointment. And remember that everything has to be print. First, you need your appointment information. So after taking your appointment on the website, they will give you like a, a form. And what they need at the entrance is scan the barcode. So you need to make sure that you are able to give them the paper. You need your application form. You have to sign also the application form. I think the first page and last page. In case you need to modify some information on your form, you can actually like decide to reapply if you save your information. But you can also like just um, like change the information and countersign next to the information to prove that you have updated that information like you don't need to go through the process of reprinting everything um, so this is actually quite nice like there are many countries that are very rigid on these kind of things uh, but this was uh, pretty fine something to note also uh, when you are applying for the form you need like a, a photo if your photo later on is rejected you might have to take another photo there is a photo booth over there as well as printing machine and computers in the case you are not able to have all the documents in advance like we were a bit worried that we will not have all the documents etc but in the end like with this list and because they have everything you need over there i don't really think you need to worry so much but i continue so after the photo you need a copy of your passport information page and because I'm an EP in Singapore, I needed to give a photocopy of my EP card, both sides, as well as showing in the SingPass app the expiry date of my pass. Then you need some other supporting document because they want to know where you are going and how you are going, these kind of things. Um, that's why you need to book your plane ticket in advance because you need to um, give like... We gave the receipt, the email receipt of our booking confirmation, make sure that there is your name on it as well as the hotel booking if you are staying in an hotel. In our case, we are going to stay at um, Lin's mom's place. 
So we had to get an invitation letter from her where you have to fill in some information such as the relationship and also the address and you need the Chinese ID of that person. But I will tell you if you have a particular situation it's better to have too many documents than not enough. Concerning what happened yesterday, so we arrived at 11 because Lynn's appointment was at 11. Mine was at 1 but they allowed us to just go in. Actually over there there is like a ton of people who are queuing before you. I think when we arrived it was like maybe 70% before us so we had to queue for quite a long time. I think in total we spent like 2 hours over there which is like still not too bad I would say. Uh, but you have to make sure that you bring some water and maybe some games especially if you are coming with kids because I mean you have to stand there it's not like always the best um, but one thing I would advise you if you have to wait is try to go to counter 18 and 19 because that's actually where you can have a first check of your document it's not a submission they are just gonna look at your paper and maybe answer some of your question so um, you get a queue number there and they can answer your question so that you are sure that when you are going to go to the real counter you will have like no trouble and you are sure that you have all the paper because I would have hated it that I go to the counter and then I realize like I don't have the EP photocopy or that something is not correct so yeah just make sure that you go there first but yeah as I told you in the end like everything was smooth um, I went to the counter, gave my paper. They actually changed the duration of the visa. So in my case, I have a single visa for 30 days. But Lynn had the opportunity to have a one-year visa. Um, so with like multiple entries. So most likely he will be able to go back to China, which is like good for him. And for the price, I paid $111 SGD. But remember that over there, they only take cash or pena. If you don't have Pena, I guess it's okay to go to ATM because you are in the city center so should have a few around. But just so you know, and then when you are done with the application, they are telling you when to collect. So in our case, it's four days um, after and the center is open from 9 to 3 p.m. for the collection. And then from there, it's like really nice because you are sure that you will be going to China. Like you can plan on where we want to go, Chongqing, maybe Shanghai and maybe other cities. If you have recommendation, I will definitely take because in the end, I don't know much about China. Like um, Lin is always talking about the food in Chongqing, which I look forward to, um, but I don't know where else I really want to go. As final words, I think what is really difficult about applying for a Chinese visa is that the information is not really transparent, especially about the list of documents that you need to bring. So I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, also concerning your timeline, make sure that you arrange it nicely. In our case, for the time we applied, we were only able to get an appointment one month later um, and you have to do your visa between like three to one month before you are departing and definitely make sure that you are getting your visa before you are departing i wish you the best if you are planning on visiting china in 2023 hello a few days later because i went to collect the visa today i wanted to let you know how it was so here it is um so this is my chinese visa as you can see so it's a l visa for 30 days single entry. It's really cool to have it in my hand finally after this. I mean not that complicated like now that it is here I'm like okay not that bad uh, but today so I went for the collection. I went during lunch time. Uh, it's the same process you have to go there you get a queue number then you wait for your number to be called. You just need like the, the form paper that they give you when you pay. So make sure that you are not losing this paper between the, the application process to the collection uh, because then I think you could be in trouble. <laughs> it was way faster than last time but I still had to wait like 20% were before me so I wait maybe for like 30 minutes but like really not that bad and now nah, it's here so that's great. If you have any question concerning the application process, do let me know and I will try to answer you because sometimes the information is not that clear but I can relate based on my experience. Like if you have an edge case, um, most likely I won't be able to help you but maybe someone else will be able to. We are going to China in one month! Let me know if you want me to share my adventure over there. I will definitely share it on TikTok also so you can join me there. As always, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye bye!